one of the biggest unsolved murders of the century. Six-year-old John Benet Ramsey was found murdered in her home. She'd been battered, strangled, and sexually abused. Immediately, suspicion fell on the family, but the parents and son Burke always proclaimed their innocence. The night that your sister John Benet was killed, there were only three people in that house that we know the identity of. You're the one that has never spoken. John Benet's brother, Burke Ramsey, finally breaks his silence. It was Christmas, his 20 year anniversary. The killer has never been found. Some people have speculated that you've been hiding out for this last 20 years. What do you say to that? Do you remember the last time you saw John Benet alive? John Benet Ramsey's skull was fractured on the right side of her head. Did you hit your sister over the head with a baseball bat or a flashlight? Had you ever violently attacked her before? Did you murder your sister? The exclusive interview, 20 years in the making. Now, from Boulder, Colorado, it's the season premiere of Dr. Phil. For two decades, the unsolved murder of six-year-old John Benet Ramsey has remained one of the most mysterious cold cases in history. The child beauty queen's body was found the day after Christmas in 1996, here in the basement of her family's 15-room mansion in Boulder, Colorado. Today, the home is surrounded by an iron fence and hidden by trees. It even has a new address, but nothing can erase the haunting image of the path decorated with candy canes for Christmas dusted with snow, surrounded by police tape. To those of you who may want to ask, let me address you very directly, I did not kill my daughter, John Bonet. We were kidnapped. Hurry, please. Explain to me what's going on, okay? Let me assure you, that I did not kill Jean Benet. Okay, what's your name? Are you happy? I'm the mother. Oh my God! Please. I did not have anything to do with it. I love that child with my whole of my heart and soul. It's the mysterious murder case of an American sweetheart who's responsible for the death of little John Benet. In the 35 years I've been doing this, I've never seen a case like the unsolved murder of John Benet Ramsey. If you look at the Ramsey case, this went far beyond what you would expect. There were more mistakes made in this case than any other case I've ever seen. I believe that when the case first started, that it didn't look like the Ramseys did this. Within a week, it was clear that the Boulder Police Department had made up its mind. It was someone in the household. Game, set, match. John Ramsey and his wife had been under this cloud of suspicion ever since then. When a child is murdered, police have learned to look first at family members. Bizarre circumstances and unexplained evidence caused police to immediately focus their investigation on the Ramsey family. In the 20 years since this innocent child was so tragically murdered, every angle, every shred of evidence has been evaluated and re-evaluated except one. There has been one critically important missing link. John Bonet's older brother, Burke Ramsey. Burke Ramsey was the only other person known to be in the house the night his sister was murdered and he has never spoken publicly. He has never answered questions about what happened in this house the night his sister was murdered, until today. Christmas Day, 1996, the Ramsey family had spent the evening at a holiday party. Patsy helped tuck six-year-old Jean Benet into bed. That may have been the last time they saw their daughter alive. 5.30 a.m. the next morning, 
Patsy woke up early because the family was planning to leave town on vacation. She walked down the back stairs from her third floor bedroom in their 15-room Tudor-style home in Boulder, Colorado. And she went down the spiral staircase and three quarters of the way through the spiral staircase, she saw papers on the floor and started to read them. The ransom note, Patsy skimmed the words. We've kidnapped your daughter. Don't call the police or we'll kill her. Get $118,000. Patsy was by the phone. So I said, call police. I'm fine on them now. We have a kidnapping. Hurry, right, please. About 20 minutes later, police arrived, followed by the FBI. For the next six hours, the Ramseys waited for the kidnappers' promised call. Two different searches of the house turned up nothing. It was a Boulder police officer, Linda Arndt, who told John to go with his friend Fleet White and search the house one more time. They get to the basement, they go down the hallway towards the wine cellar, and he hits the light switch, and he immediately sees his daughter wrapped in the blanket laying on the floor. He notices her hands are tied. There was a piece of duct tape across John Binet's mouth. He sees a garrote around the neck. This was not a kidnapping. This was a murder. You have a two and a half page ransom note. A strangulation. Sexual abuse. It just doesn't happen this way. Strange story in Colorado where a six-year-old girl thought to be a kidnap victim has been found dead. The child beauty queen was found in the basement of her family's home the day after Christmas. It's also reported the girl was strangled with a noose-like cord in her mouth cave, and there were no signs of a break-in. John Benet Ramsey's skull was fractured on the right side of her head. She'd been battered, strangled, and sexually abused. There was no sign of forced entry, no footprints in the snow. The rope used to choke Jean Bonnet was tightened with a paintbrush from her mother's hobby kit. An alleged ransom note was written on a pad of paper from inside the house. The brutal killing of a pageant princess is raising troubling questions in many minds about child beauty contests. I think the Jean Bonnet Ramsey case would have stayed a local story if it wasn't for one element. And that was those pageant videos that were released within a few days after the tragedy. Those videos showed a certain amount of sexuality for the young child. People try to make it seem ugly and something that it wasn't, and um, I just know how much fun it was. It, what a good time we had together. There were some negative connotations to these images, you know, whether the child had been pushed too far and whether this was symptomatic of some end result that caused the death of this child. For two weeks now in Boulder, Colorado, an American tragedy has been unfolding. Tonight, no new clues in the search for answers. The setting for this murder was not typical. Very affluent, exclusive neighborhood, beautiful multi-million dollar home. All of these things led many people to believe, well, there can't be a bad guy walking around a place like that. It must be the parents or her brother. The evidence that points to the Ramseys, I think, you know, is the fact that they were in the house at the time of the murder. Immediately, suspicion fell on the family. But the parents and son Burke always proclaimed their innocence. The list of suspects narrows. Soon, there will be no one on the list but you. John Benet Ramsey's parents hired attorney shortly after their six-year-old child was murdered and have communicated with police only through legal representatives. It has been said that you and Patsy did not cooperate with the police, that you in fact obstructed this investigation. Well, that's totally false. Police came to our home and we talked to them for, it seemed like hours. And they started this, well, we need you to come down to the police station. And now, by now we had media trucks out in front and Patsy was in no condition to be moved. She was in bad shape. As we've been reporting, police in Boulder, Colorado finally have begun full-length interrogations of the little girl's parents. I'm talking about scientific evidence. I don't give a flying flip how scientific it is. 
go back to the damn drawing board. I didn't do it. They were still suspects in the eyes of the public and the police, who continued to focus almost exclusively on them, particularly Patsy. The theory was that John Bonet was killed by Patsy over bedwetting and that uh, the garrot was constructed for some reason to make it look like it was a kidnap, killing gone bad. That was all part of the staging. The garrot had intricate, complex, even unusual knotting. Someone knew what they were doing. There are several key people investigators would like to question. Tops on the list, John and Patsy Ramsey, as well as their son, Burke. Coming up, the interview two decades in the making. Jean Bonnet's brother, Burke, breaks his silence. You answer all the questions. You said, I can ask you anything. Nothing is off limits. You speak about this one time. It's been nearly 20 years since six-year-old John Bonnet Ramsey was found dead in her parents' home. Her killer never brought to justice. In the enduring mystery of Jean Bonnet's murder, Burke Ramsey was the nine-year-old brother who by all accounts slept soundly in his room that Christmas of 1996, while his sister's skull was fractured and she was strangled nearby. Her parents, John and Patsy, a nine-year-old brother, Burke, were investigated, but never charged. So the question becomes, who? And the only other person in the house that night that we know of was Burke Ramsey. So does Jean Bonnet's brother Burke have some memory locked away that could unlock the case? Some people said that you had gone to great lengths to distance Burke from the Boulder police investigation. Not at all. I've heard rumors where, where we were hiding Burke because he was this crazy kid. Well, not that wasn't the case at all. We, yes, we were hiding him from the media, but no, we didn't hide him from anybody. We, we protected him. We hid him. We, we were worried about his physical safety. I mean, we were under assault by the media and press and cameras and people. We didn't know who they were. We just didn't want Burke recognized because he was growing up. He was not a nine-year-old boy anymore. He was an 11-year-old, 12-year-old. We wanted to have a normal life. Would you respect our privacy, please? It's being reported that investigators want to interview Jean Benet's brother, Burke. But why? The experts say investigators want to re-interview Burke in the hope that he can help them piece together some new information. Detectives want to talk to John Benet's 23-year-old brother, Burke, who was nine at the time of the murder. Many people banded about the theory that Burke himself could be responsible for the murder. As recently as 2010, investigators wanted to interview Burke Ramsey again. Burke did not speak to them. Why, 14 years after John Bonet's death, did detectives still want to talk to him? Today, Burke breaks his 20-year silence and finally tells us what he knows about those tragic events. This was a no-holes-barred interview. Nothing was off limits. He agreed to answer any and all questions and to do so without a lawyer present. The night that your sister, John Bonet, was killed, there were three people in that house that we know the identity of, and you're one of those three, you, your mother, and your father. But in the 20 years that have gone by, you're the one that has never spoken. You've never talked about this publicly, and you've decided to do so now. My question for you is why now? And why here? For a long time, the media basically made our lives crazy. I mean, it's hard to miss the cameras and news trucks in your front yard. And we go to the supermarket sometimes, and there'd be a tabloid, you know, with my picture, Jean-Monet's picture, plastered on the front. They would follow us around. Seeing that as a little kid, it's just kind of a chaotic nightmare. So I was pretty skeptical of, like, any sort of media. Like, it just made me a very private person. As to why I'm doing it now, it's the 20th anniversary, and there's apparently still a lot of attention around it. Well, my goal here is that you answer all the questions. You said I can ask you anything. Nothing is off limits. You speak about this one time. Some people have speculated that your parents weren't protecting you. They were hiding you. Yeah. And that for this last 20 years, 
that you've been hiding out instead of just choosing not to speak? What do you say to that? For the last 20 years, I wanted to grow up like a normal kid, which does not include like going in front of TV cameras. But if you had answered the curiosity, might that have stopped it all? To me, it seemed like it would rouse it all up again. I want to ask you some tough questions, but first, let's turn the hands of time back a little bit. When you look back, was Christmas like a really big deal at your house? Yeah. Decorations in the yard, on the inside. My parents would throw a party every year. Hello, I'm Hatsy Ramsey. Daddy's not here, but this is Jean Benet. She's four. Burke is seven. And we'd like to welcome you to our home and wish you a very Merry Christmas. Now, two days before Jean Benet was murdered, that was when the party was at your house, right? Yeah. And you had people tour the house? I think there was like a like a Boulder home tour thing. Like we weren't the only people that did it. Right, they went house to house yeah. and looked at all the decorations. So when do you guys open gifts? That Christmas Eve or Christmas morning? Christmas morning. Do you remember what you did that morning? I remember peeking down and I remember seeing like an electric train and a bike. And I was super excited. Was John Bonet with you? Yeah. Did she peak so. too? Yeah, I think yeah. so, yeah. Did you get what you had asked for that year? Nintendo 64. And what did John Bonet get? I think she got a big dollhouse. We both got bikes. It was a typical Christmas morning. A lot of neighbor kids came over after a while and they were in and out of the house, and but just, just a nice Christmas day. John Bonet got a doll for Christmas, mm -hmm. right? Patsy had sent doll company, a picture of John Monet, and they made a doll that supposedly looked like her. Patsy saw the doll lying in the box and kind of startled her. What did she say? She said it looked like John Monet was in a coffin. The highlight of the 25th was really a visit for dinner at uh, Fleet and Priscilla White's home. Fleet White was John Ramsey's best friend. Fleet White became a suspect and was interviewed 18 times by the authorities. When you came home that night, John Monet had fallen asleep mm -hmm. on the ride home, so you carried her in. Mm -hmm. I, I laid her on the bed, and then Patsy went up later and I think put her pajamas on and tucked her in. Christmas night in the Ramsey house. John Bonet is tucked snugly into her bed, dreaming about her brand new bike. John and Patsy Ramsey are down the hall in their room, presumably fast asleep. Brother Burke is sleeping in his room. Do you remember the last time you saw John Bonet alive? Coming up. After you went to bed that night, did you hear anything out of the ordinary at all during the night? Do you remember the last time you saw John Bonet alive? I want to say it was in the car on the way back from the Whites. I think this is the last picture really? that was ever taken of her alive. <laughs> I don't remember the hair being that long, but... It's hard to believe that a short time later she would be dead. Yeah. Where was your bedroom in relation to hers? So it was like kind of around the corner through the playroom, down the hall. And this is your room? Yep. After you went to bed, did you hear anything out of the ordinary at all during the night? No. You don't recall waking up, hearing anything in retrospect? No. Melody Stanton, who lives diagonally across the street from the Ramseys, says she heard shrieks of agony coming from the Ramsey house 14 hours before John Bonet's body was found in the basement. And she thought it came from a lower part of the house. So if that in fact is the child's scream, then the child's life was taken in the wee hours of the 26th of December. The next morning, you were heading off for a vacation trip over the Christmas holidays, right? right? We had reservations to go on a family cruise with my older children. We both got up, Patsy had gotten 
dressed, I was shaving. The first thing I remember is waking up, getting dressed hurriedly, going downstairs. We weren't going to wake the kids up until we were absolutely ready to go because they could stay in their pajamas and jump in the car. And I go down the spiral staircase and there on one of the runs of the stair is the three-page ransom note. Mr. Ramsey, listen carefully. We have your daughter in our possession. You stand a 99% chance of killing your daughter if you try to outsmart us. Chilling words from the JonBenet Ramsey ransom note, reportedly found by Patsy Ramsey on these stairs inside their home. She came down these stairs and seen the ransom note on the bottom step. And I ran back upstairs and pushed open her bedroom door and she was gone. I heard Patsy scream my name and I knew it was something was seriously wrong. Where did the scream come from? It was either the first or second floor. Our bedroom was kind of up in an attic and she had this ransom note. It clearly said, you know, we have your daughter. It explained who they were. They wanted a certain amount of money. Don't call the police, we're watching you. If you do this, we're gonna behead your daughter. The note remains perhaps the most critical and perplexing piece of evidence in the ongoing murder investigation. If you can, take me through that moment when she turns and hands you this ransom note. It's hard to take it all in, as I recall. It was like, what? Your daughter's been taken, and it's a horrible, horrible feeling. I had that punch in the stomach feeling, and, and then I was trying to absorb what was said in this three pages of scribbling. The ransom note threw everybody off. It was written on a notepad belonging to the Ramses with one of their pens, and it took at least 15 minutes to write it. The ransom demand was for $118,000, which was exactly what John's Christmas bonus was. Colorado newspapers are reporting that a practice ransom note was found, written on paper found in the Ramsey home. So there's a lot of suspicion around the note. If somebody is going to kidnap somebody, by the way, you bring the ransom note already written. You don't write it inside the house. I had it laid out on the floor because I was trying to like, read it all at once. Patsy was by the phone, so I said, call the police. By the time the first officer arrived at the scene, the house is filled with Patsy and John's friends. They called the Whites, they called Fernies, they called their pastor, the minister of their church. You know, the police made some very strategic mistakes. There may have been hair fibers from the perpetrator. There may have been footprints on the carpet. There may have been fingerprints. So now you have everybody going all over the house. You know, the whole place is like a, a little bit of a, like a train station by then. The police come mm -hmm. in a squad car. All right. Did that concern you? It says two men are watching your daughter. If you even talk to a stray dog, no. she's dead. I would have called the army if I could have. But they pulled up in a police cruiser. Well, and they didn't know what was going on exactly, and so I don't fault them for that. So you're okay at that point with yeah. what you're doing? I want to get as much help as I can lay my hands on to find my child. Do you remember waking up that morning? Yep. The first thing I remember is my mom first thing in my room, really frantic, saying like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, running around my room looking for Jean-Monet. At that point, I was awake. Why did you feel scared, you know, when, when mom came rushing in? Like I felt like something bad. She left and could kind of hear her freaking out. I'm sure mom went home, like, oh. Did you go down and see what's going on? And the next thing I remember is a police officer coming to my room and shining a flashlight. It was still dark when this happened. Yeah, I was just laying there. What time did she come in? Early, I don't remember. It had to be. It was still dark, so it had to be yeah. pretty early. Did she turn on the light when she came in? I don't remember if she did or not. How long after she came in before the police officer came in? Under an hour. So she comes in. And were you asleep when she came in? Did she wake you up? She woke me up. And she's running around your room saying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. 
What else did she say? Did you know she was looking for John Bonet? Uh, I remember her saying, where's my baby? Where's my baby? So after she left, w w what did you do? I just laid there and didn't really know what else to do. It seems really odd to me that you're nine years old and your mother comes in the room in seemingly the middle of the night because it's dark and says, where's my baby? Where's my baby? And then runs out of the room and you just lay there. It seems really odd to me that you're nine years old and your mother comes in the room in seemingly the middle of the night because it's dark and says, where's my baby? Where's my baby? And then runs out of the room and you just lay there as yeah. opposed to getting up and going out and saying, what's going on? And then a police officer comes in your room, which I yeah. assume is the first time in your entire life that a police officer is coming well, in your room with a flashlight looking around. And you still just stay in bed. To be fair, I didn't know it was a police officer. It was just kind of... But somebody comes in your room with a flashlight, and you never get up and say, what is going on here? I guess I kind of like to avoid conflict, or I'm... I don't know, I guess I just felt safer there. Were you curious? I'm not the worry type. I'm not the... I guess part of me doesn't want to know what's going on. <laughs> Critics would say you weren't curious because you already knew. He didn't have to get up and go check because he knew exactly what had happened. I was scared, I think. I mean, I didn't know if there was some bad guy downstairs that my dad was chasing off with a gun or, you know, I had no idea. Were you concerned leaving him alone in the room? Well... Knowing that his sister had been taken. Yeah. We knew where he was. He was safe. And that, at that point, that's what we wanted to be sure of. We were so focused on John Bonet being gone, I guess. So two hours later, a detective comes. Linda Arndt. Okay. And um, was she helpful? Yeah, I mean, she was trying to sort things out. And uh, uh, I remember she sat me down and said, you know, when you talk to this person they call, you've got to insist you hear John Bonet's voice. So I was you know, as ready as I could be for that call. And of course, 10 o'clock came and went. So at the time, you felt like she was being helpful. You had no idea that she considered you... Oh, no. ...to be the culprit. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Linda Arndt, the, the uh, lead detective that was there, went on national television uh, a few months ago and said, I didn't act right, I was too calm, was uh, cordial. Did it surprise you to hear that that was her reaction? I don't remember being cordial. She was there to help me. I was well, I was grateful for her being there. So she interpreted that as being cordial. So be it. She had never been in a situation like that as a police officer, I learned later. In retrospect, we called the police. We thought they knew what they were doing, and they didn't have a clue. I called the police to help me and to find my child. I never ever crossed my mind that she was suspicious of my demeanor. And some of the observations made that I read about later were, were nonsense. John casually looked through the mail. I was looking for another communication from the kidnapper. The police should have done that. But they observed me doing it, and so John was so cold and callous that he was going through the mail looking at his bill. So that's, that's nonsense. So who came and got you eventually? I think it was my dad that came in. You have do go downstairs. Describe that scene for me. Coming up. Were you scared for John Bonet yet? I think I was trying to be positive. You remember them asking you if you knew what happened to your sister? I told the guy, I was like, uh, you know, she's probably hiding somewhere. You eventually do go downstairs. Describe that scene for me. I just remember, like, I, I have an image in my head of the kitchen, and it's kind of it was really early morning, and there are a few people around that I didn't really know. There might have been a police car, I think. I just remember kind of walking slowly downstairs and everybody just being like, hey, we're going to take you to Fleet. Somebody eventually told you John bonet has been kidnapped, right? They didn't Somebody say kidnapped, they said she's missing. Missing. Yeah. And who told you that? I remember a, like a detective or something coming in and interviewing me. He told me... Were you scared for John Bonet yet? I think I was trying to be positive. Do you remember them asking you if you knew what happened to your sister? I told the guy, I was like, uh, 
you know, she's probably hiding somewhere. Did you check the whole house? Or maybe she's outside or... Who suggested for you to search the house? Linda Arndt. She said, take Fleet White with you and search the house, see if you notice anything out of the ordinary. He should not have been allowed to search that house by himself. He could have tampered with evidence without even knowing that it was evidence. That's a critical mistake. So where did you begin? Went down to the basement. Why start there? It's the most logical entry point. Went into the, we called it the train room. The kids had a train set up in this. There was a window open. There was a suitcase sitting under the window, which shouldn't have been there. And I noted that and mentioned it to Flea. And I said, that shouldn't be there. You knew there was a broken window downstairs, right? Well, I had broken that glass and then opened the window to get in the previous summer because I'd left my key and Patsy was gone. I thought we had it fixed, but we never went in the basement, so I didn't know that. So I wasn't surprised that the glass was broken, but I was surprised that the window was open. So you come to this door and it's closed. And what's in that door? Well, we called it the wine cellar, but there's never any wine in it. It was a junk room. I was just going through methodically every square inch of that basement. And I opened the door and there's John Bonet. Coming up. Did you know she was dead? There was a red spot on her throat and I just was hoping she'd wake up. I picked her up, carried her upstairs. Take me through the moment that your eyes fell on John Bonet's face as she was lying there on the floor. Did you know she was dead? No, not at that point. I mean, I had this rush of, thank God I found her. And it was just this overwhelming sense of joy that I'd found my child. And her hands were tied over her head. She had tape on her mouth. I immediately took the tape off. Her eyes were closed. Could you, at that point, perceive her injuries at the time? Could you see her neck and her head? No, I didn't. I, there was a red spot on her throat. I didn't see the grot because it was too deeply embedded in her skin. And I just was hoping she'd wake up and begin to realize that she wasn't going to and just started to scream. I picked her up, carried her upstairs. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was just horrified. I couldn't speak. I was just screaming, and I took her upstairs and laid her down. I, didn't, I, I guess I was taking her to help in my mind. I didn't perhaps want to accept that she was dead. Linda Arndt knelt down beside her as I was and felt for her pulse and looked me in the eye and said, she's dead. And that's when I was just stunned. She looked very peaceful. One of our friends ran in to the room and said, we need an ambulance, tried to dial 911. And I kept screaming, what is it, what is it? And, you know, then in just a couple minutes, then I walked into the living room. What Linda Arch said is that your eyes met and she knew in that moment you killed your daughter. Linda Arndt has stated publicly that when she saw John with John Bonet, it was like a thousand lights going off in her mind. She knew exactly who had killed John Bonet. At one point, she said she was so worried that she was in the presence of a bad person that she was counting the bullets that she had on her body and that she had 18 bullets because she feared she might have to shoot her way out of there. Frightening and incompetent, beyond incompetent. Shouldn't have been a police officer. There's a detective, Linda Art, who deals with uh, various emotional cases, not a homicide detective, not a kidnapping detective, because the Boulder Police Department didn't have those experts. Is your interpretation that she thought she was going to have to shoot everybody? That yeah. She all in on I, I think her comment was, I looked around and counted the people and, and then counted the bullets in my gun. I mean, this is crazy stuff. Absolutely crazy stuff. When was the next time you saw your parents? The next thing I remember is going to another one of our friends' houses. Everyone was really sad over there. And my dad came and told me, John is in heaven now. And he started crying. And then I started crying. 
it was all really sad, but I didn't know I get so many in heaven. So you go from thinking she's missing to she's been found, she's uh, actually dead, she's in heaven. Your dad tells you. My that. dad just said she's in heaven now and I was kind of like, how is that possible? Like, and what did you say? I started crying. I don't think I said anything. I didn't believe it at first. You must have realized this has gone way bad. Are Patsy Ramsey's writings getting red flagged by Boulder cops? Three days after she gave police a fourth handwriting sample, the mother of Jean Benet Ramsey is being asked for a fifth sample. The ransom note was a big monkey wrench in this case, and it threw everybody off. The police thought Patsy wrote it. Your mother found a ransom note. Have you read it? I don't think I've read the whole thing. I've definitely seen pictures of it, though. I think law enforcement found it odd that there would be a ransom note at a murder scene. Some police have been suspect that your mother actually wrote this. Does that look like her handwriting? Tomorrow, Burke finally addresses the strange and unexplained evidence that has led people to speculate that he murdered his sister. Take a look. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. What's your name? Are you happy with the murder? Oh my God! There's a lot of debate about where you were when that 911 call was made. What took place on that tape has led to some of the conspiracy theories. Police investigators say your voice was heard saying, what did you find? Did you speak those words? Autopsy results did find undigested pineapple in JonBenet's stomach. Did you and she eat pineapple together at any time during the day? Maybe. The lead investigator says one of the reasons that he believes that you are the culprit here is that on the day of your sister's murder, you never asked about her welfare. Plus, the never-before-seen interrogation tapes of Burke Ramsey. This was 13 days after John Bonet's murder. Nobody in the world has seen this before. What do you think happened to your sister? I think someone That's tomorrow. You do not want to miss it. And the investigation into John Bonet's death brought massive media coverage, and with that came wild speculation. Did Patsy Ramsey write the ransom note? If so, who was she covering up for? Herself or the one person left on earth she would do anything to protect? Her son, Burke. I want to thank CBS 48 Hours for the use of their archival footage on this case. From Boulder, Colorado, thanks for watching.